Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Tactics Live, episode 38. As you can tell, I'm not at PCA's garage. We're actually in Las Vegas. Yes, don't be too jealous, uh, but this is actually, there's a reason why we're here. Uh, this is the 10th SEMA that PCA has attended, the Specialty Equipment Market Association. It's at the LA um, Las Vegas Conf Convention Center, and uh, it's just miles and rows and rows of all things aftermarket and we'll get, we'll be talking about what the new things are you know being displayed at SEMA and uh, we're gonna get get into the details of all of that but before that we're gonna share with you uh, all the different things that goes on into this building that we're here but before that I want to remind you please like subscribe and comment for those of you that are watching live if you put your name down uh, where you're from, put it in the live chat area. I'll be monitoring it and you can win some great prizes. We've got some SEMA swag that we'll send out to you. We've got a SEMA 10 that can go up on the wall. We've got a SEMA ball cap. And we also picked up, I'll show you here, this West Coast Customs t-shirt, which has this awesome 911 on it and at the end of the show we're going to talk to you about the details of this 911 because when we saw it in person it was quite amazing a little bit different from what i've seen come out of west coast customs in the past which is probably what was most surprising of all so stay tuned to the end of the show as we go over that um i would like to thank our sponsor pirelli without their support none of this would happen and uh, be sure if you see a Pirelli rep at a PCA event or wherever you might go, thank them for their support of Tech Tactics Live. So without further ado, I would like to bring up the owner of 900 Series Motorsports, star of the 900 Series show, uh, the Porsche shop reality show. You've seen it on Motor Trend. I think it's on Mav TV now. And then his trusty sidekick is probably going to make an appearance. Uh, but before that, Tony Mazzagatti, <laughs> welcome. Great to see great, you. Great to see you here. We usually see you at uh, on, on your turf in different events. It's nice to have it's you nice here. To, that's nice to be, well, you know, my, my dad lives not too far from yep. here, and he uh, comes down and hangs out with you from time yep. to time. And I know I've been trying to get here for a while, and there's this whole thing yeah. that we had to go through the past 18 months that's been kind of tough. But it only feels, took SEMA to get <laughs> here. <you know? laughs> but it definitely feels good to be here. And, of course, if you talk about... Um, the 900 series, you got to talk about probably the funniest guys I know. He's the general manager of this shop here. Ramon, are you around? Yeah, he's, he's gonna Ramon. sashay into the he's our, corp <laughs> he's our corporate clown. The corporate there, clown. There you go. Jeez. There you go. So, before we get into what we saw at SEMA, I thought we'd talk about what Tony and Ramon's been up to. They're in season, not trying to promote anything. <laughs> no, no, I don't no. even have a microphone, but thank you. <laughs> You can, but I'm sure you can hear him. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are on season two of yep. the show. Yeah. Give, or, give For those that haven't had the chance to see the series, how did it all start? Because you guys are a little bit different from, than most reality shows. Most reality shows has a lot of drama and, you know, whatever. And, and you guys are like the real deal. Like you, 10 minutes before, before we started filming, they were working on cars, moving cars in and out. He just washed his hands. That was full yeah. of grease. So it's like... It's legit, right? It, That's yeah. the difference for me. It, it is real reality. I mean, there's no scripts, which is why we stumble a lot and, and whatnot. Uh, we only work on our customers' cars, so it's it's real work that we do on the cars. Um, the, the reason, one of the big differences is that we own the show rather than most of these reality shows are owned by the networks. So the network dictates to them you know, the drama that they want. And if they want tattoos and throw beer bottles at each other, we don't do that. That's so, right. So it's a it's a <laughs> real show. <laughs> Behind the scenes, it's a whole different <laughs> ballgame. <laughs> you know. So how did you land here? Because this used to be called Carl's, Carl's Place. Place. Right. Yes. Well, I, I bought the shop about 16 years ago in 2005. Um, it's been a Porsche exclusive shop for 47 years now wow. so we just continued the same thing we work on porsches from 356s up to panameras and gt4s and you name it uh and and these guys you know i've got three techs they look they know a lot more than we do mm -hmm. about the stuff so uh now it's 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 been an interesting ride both as a small business and now with the show this is our second season that we're filming we're almost finished filming the second season 
right now. But it's been it's been really interesting. It's been fun. Hopefully, Robert, you can show some of the photos I took as we took a tour uh, yesterday as we were setting up. And uh, I'm like a kid in the candy store because you roll up to the place. OK, it looks like a shop and it's got Porsches parked out front. But then as I started walking down their inventory aisles, it's like, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you have a nice security system here because there's like gold here. Gold in terms of <laughs> yep. Porsche parts stuff. Um, if you look behind me here with all those wheels, like back in the day, you put those wheels up just because they were in the way. They, they were in the way. So we pushed them up there for one of our episodes and they've just right. been there now. You're right. And now you're looking at you see these Fuchs, you see 928 wheels, 964 wheels. That's yeah. that's gold hanging there's up some, there. There's some 14 inch wheels, 15s, 16s, and 18s. I but mean, you didn't know that. You just put yeah, up there because they were just wheels that we had around. And there, there's more stuff like that upstairs. You've got 356 parts. Shh, don't <laughs> <go there. laughs> new, yeah. new, origi new original stuff. You've yeah. got good used stuff. Uh, I, I think back in the day. Private stock. You yeah, got private, private stock. stock. Yeah, you used to. Stock used to dismantle cars we're, we're right? actually hoarding it a little bit more now we're not i don't know using anything it about hoarding i have yes. no <laughs> idea what, what hoarding is like uh, my friends and my family are yeah. laughing hysterically uh -huh. right yeah. now i can imagine yeah so season two what's uh what's in store there and what's what's different it's it's probably a lot more of the same thing with different you know we've got a little bit more feedback from people the kinds of things they want to see us work on and of course, somebody that's a, a Boxster fan, they want to see more Boxster stuff. Mm -hmm. 944 guys want to see more of them. The 996, 997s and so on, they want to see more of that. So we're always trying to keep up with what they want to see. And that's tough because we're, we're in the same boat. You know, when we cover a car in Panorama or online, you know, you do a 993 and the guy's like, well, what about the 968? You yeah. do a 968, they're like, what about the 914s? Yeah. It's like there's... The great thing is there's so much content to potentially cover. Yep. The difficult thing is doing it in a timely fashion where everyone is happy that you've covered their their love. Right. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we're interested in having a, an entertaining and informative show, but it's still a business that we have to keep our customers happy and we're doing work on their their cars. I do have to apologize. You don't have a microphone on, so I'm doing that was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that was that was that was totally on purpose. That, that we was, didn't microphone. That was smart. Ramon, he could be across the yeah. the, the the garage here, and we'd yeah. still hear him. You probably don't need the mic anyway. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, but no. Yeah. So so talk about the balance of having a show and running a business. I mean, I've I've only been here two days. Obviously, there's no yeah. cameras. Yeah. Like, when do you schedule? Do you do that at night? Do you on the weekends, or how's that work? Well, because of the pandemic, the second season was a little trickier than the the first season. Even though we had some of the pandemic in the first season. But we tried to economize our time by bringing in the, the camera crew and and really blasting a lot of work. And so we did a lot of filming early on uh, so that we can then put in post-production and, and, and make some nice episodes out of it. But in the meantime, we've missed a lot of really interesting projects and and jobs and things that we were doing to customers' cars because the camera crew they, they can't wasn't just, they around. They can't just hang out here all day right. long like you yeah. would. Yeah. Well, he gets on the text nerves after a while. A little bit, having a oh, microscope yeah, behind yeah. you. And well, I don't think the microscope, I think it's more, this is what they do. And I don't think anyone wants someone standing over their shoulder while they're working. No. I I mean, and it, and yeah. it, slow, it slows them down because they're, they're in the way. They're explain, <laughs> well, they're explaining what they're doing sure. in detail. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes, again, we're not we're not so professional with in front of the cameras. And we have to sometimes say the same thing over and over again. It never comes out the same. It never way comes twice. out the same. Yeah. Absolutely. And when we're doing DIYs at PCA headquarters, you know, be it changing a cowl or or doing a suspension stop or brakes or something like that, it takes three times as long to do it because you're like, yeah. oh well, we got to get this angle and yeah. oh, we got to make sure we show this and and yeah, retake change the camera, change, change, the, change camera the lighting. Goes. So are you guys um, excited that SEMA is back? I mean, we oh, yeah. they took well, a year it's off. Just, it's just a local little show it's, here. You never yeah. have enough time to see it. It gets bigger and crazier, yeah. and you just don't have enough time, especially, you know, we live here, and you got to run a business. But it's, uh, it's They're, they're going to do something a little bit different this year, I think, on Friday. Right. Opening the last to the show. public. They're opening it to the public, which yeah. has never been open before. Right, and right. They do a lot of things outside with uh, – um, uh, SEMA ignited and right they and drive the drifting the cars and, and yeah. So that so for those of you that are local to uh, Las Vegas, I'm sure you already know this because it comes every year. But there's a lot to do outside of yep. the convention center um, where you don't need a pass. And then to get in, 
during Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you have to be affiliated with a business to get right. in. Yeah, New for this year, if you're just a, a Joe Public, you can buy a ticket and go in. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll, I'll, have, I'll be honest, and we'll talk a little bit more about this when, when, when Manny comes yeah. in and joins us and talks about what we saw at SEMA. You know, it's uh, amazing 18 months or so since I was last year for the last SEMA, they've built a complete west wing. Yep. Yes. They've dug a tunnel under the convention center and they have 70 plus Teslas shuttling people back and forth between the halls, which is pretty amazing. We walk through the convention center and it is different. It's not the, it's yeah. not the same, but I can tell that everyone is happy that we're together. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And, yes. and, and people that are there want to be there and they're there to do business. And um, overall, it's it's fantastic. Well, and they spread it out. Now that we have more, I forget, there was another million square feet square in feet. this new building. So they spread it out more. So you used to have to go down the aisles sideways. Right. They were so crowded. Right. Um, but it was really kind of pleasant walking around. I was there all day Tuesday. And it I was think really we put in pleasant. like 14,000 steps on the first day. So oh, yeah. I we have did, a video yeah. I got from about eight months ago. My son works there. He's yeah. So it shows the whole tunnel just coming together to move people. It's actually going to go right underneath the strip. That's the future. That's yeah, the they want to move people. It. it was it was it was way. like a Disney ride going oh, yeah. going underneath there. It was pretty yeah. cool. Well, let's get started on the SEMA stuff. Thank you guys. Good. We'll bring you back at the end to say good, to say Perfect. goodbye. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> so while uh, they switch microphones and such. Um, yeah, so it was just nice to be back in Vegas to see uh, a lot of our business partners. Why does PCA come to uh, you know come to SEMA? It's to, to see our partners and to see what's coming downstream um, of, of technology uh, for for cars, everything, all cars, not and trucks and so on and so forth. And we do this every year, and it's very fruitful. And this year was no different, although. Like I said, the, the 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 layout and the amount of um, vendors and stuff that were there was a little less, but still very productive for us. And uh, what we thought we would do is while we were here, not only to visit the 900 series motorsports uh, folks here, but we would take photos of SEMA and bring some of the um, things that we saw and share with you all. Now, because I don't have my laptop in front of me like I normally do, I will uh monitor the live chat area so if you guys have any questions of what we're talking about we can certainly do that so again uh before uh 20 minutes or so after the hour make sure you put your your name and where you're from to win the cool prizes and i'm going to move all this stuff aside and bring up our director uh, of technical manny albin hey manny you know what SEMA means to me? SEMA means a lot of walking. A lot, a lot, a lot of walking. Lot. You might have 14 steps, 1,000 steps. I had 22 because <laughs> I couldn't find a West Wing. Because <laughs> he kept getting lost. I kept on tracing myself back. So and... so we had to divide and conquer because we have... Uh, Myself and and our advertising director have a have a different mission uh, at, at being at SEMA, and and Manny was really here to chase after all the technical content, and um, so we had to split and conquer, and uh, we we uh, compared our uh, pedometers on on our phones, and he somehow walked like four thousand more steps than I did, but it's it's good good for you. You want to go to the gym later. <laughs> all right, so again, I'm monitoring. Uh, <laughs> monitoring the live chat here if you have any questions let me know but right off let's talk about what we saw a lot of and, and this was in the west hall at sema and i'm going to hold up is there was a lot of paint protection paint protection as well as ceramic coatings and um, i'll report back and say that you know the clear stuff you've seen before the um, stealth or, or satin paint protection you've seen before, but now they're introducing colors of paint protection. And this might not seem innovative to you, but I think all the wraps that you've seen to date, that's not paint protection. That is a vinyl wrap, a color or a print that they've applied to the car. And typically like that car right there, like the, the decal that's on the center of that car, that, that 
vinyl is only about one to two mils thick, which really doesn't offer paint protection in, in the normal sense. Whereas true paint protection, you're looking at eight mils worth of thickness in the film, and that's a big difference. They also have self-healing properties that you want. Some of them now have even infused uh, ceramics. And that it. was the big. Uh, that was, a, that that was, was a big the big thing, thing, I guess, in that hall. Was I'll the, have you scoot over a little bit? Uh, ceramic uh, infused into the film, and and and, no, and I did not know that the uh, when the, it's wrapped, it's only one or two mil. Mm -hmm. Because you read on the forums and they say, well, you know, if you get your car wrapped, vinyl that's going to protect the vinyl wrap. That's yeah. going to protect your uh, paint. Uh, but one, two mil, that's very, very, very thin. thin. Very that's not going to offer much protection. No, not compared to what paint protection film is. So, uh, yeah, it seemed like uh, everybody's brother now has a company that's selling paint protection film. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's hard to differentiate with the unknown players, uh, you know, what they, they bring to the table. But the uh, guys who've been around for a while uh, keep on innovating and, uh, and infusing the... Uh, the ceramic coating inside the film it may not sound like much or may sound like a marketing gimmick, uh, but for those who do ceramic coating on their car or even on their on their film, this is uh, it's going to be a game changer, I think. Well, I think it saves the consumer a lot of money because in the past you would wrap your car and then to bring about the, the brightness, the glossiness, and also the ease of maintenance with uh, ceramic coating, you would then pay another couple thousand dollars to get the ceramic put on to your paint protection film. So here it's kind of all in one. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's and, and unlike ceramic coating, which doesn't last forever, uh, maybe three years, five mo at the most, I would think, yeah. um, this will last. It does, you, you can't wash it off, so you nope. can actually it's wash it It's built into more. the film. And then, then, and then you would maintain it. We did find out you would maintain it much like you would any other ceramic application. There's specific ceramic cleaners and, and, and um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. The, the newest thing that I saw was um, some of the paint protection films, the paint protection films, not the vinyl, the paint protection films come in black. So what's cool about that is you can do trim pieces, you can do accents of cars, um, and have a gloss black. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then I ran into another manufacturer and they said, hey, guess what? If you want to do like a Mexico blue on your car now, instead of just doing a Mexico blue colored uh, wrap or slate gray or this flip flop pink gray, now you can do all these different colors. Let me just hold them up here all these different colors. Now this is paint protection, not vinyl. Paint protection, meaning this is, I think this is actually like a seven to eight mil. Again, paint protection mean it's gonna bring color. You're gonna be able to do the color change, but it's also gonna protect your car. So that's probably the newest thing that I saw on the, on the sides of paint protection. What else did we see? Suspension, suspension. We saw some cool suspension technology. Those of you that have PASM, you'll want to check out um, JR, JRZ. And I think we have some slides of the JRZ components. You want to share with them what we learned there? Yeah, basically, uh, when it comes time to replacing your uh, your shock or a shock goes bad on a PASM system, uh, you know, the fact that replacement is fairly um, expensive. And it's, it's going to become older technology by the time you need to replace it. So JRZ has come out with a, uh, basically, a, a, you're, going, you're going to get a better product than what you have in your PASM right now, uh, tuned for your car. And they have different levels of, um, of this uh, shock that uh, works uh, with the electronics. And I think the second level, you get a whole se separate set of electronics that will control the, um, the shocks. Where PASM, PASM, just like anything else from the, from the manufacturer, has to stay within certain limitations. Uh, here, you can make your car sporty, but keep it uh, roadworthy as well. And if your car didn't come with PASM? You can still add it. Even you can still add we asked it. about that, our that, project. To me, that was pretty cool. Yeah we, yeah, we talked about Project 964. Can we add it to that? And he said, absolutely. And you can then now you have full control over your suspension. Your suspension reacts faster with this aftermarket um, valving system that they have. So this is one to watch, uh, JRZ. Uh, we did get a question from someone that is watching. Uh, Anthony Wurr. 
uh, is asking, did you see anything in the new tire technology area? Well, there was not many tire. In fact, I asked the same question. I said, where, where are some of the bigger tire manufacturers? I must have missed it. And they're not there. It yeah, was uh, the tire hall was actually quite empty. Um, yeah, the the big names, uh, some big names weren't there, and there were you know there were other big names, but they had show cars, not a whole lot out there in terms of unless we missed it. So, so to answer your question, unfortunately, we didn't see anything new on tire technology. But what we can do is reach out to the folks at Pirelli or other uh, tire partners as well. And uh, maybe we can ask them and report back at a future Tech Tactics live. There was a lot of tire. The thing I saw a lot of was uh, pickup trucks and Jeeps. There was a lot of accessories for pickup trucks and a lot of accessories for Jeeps. And the manufacturers for, uh, who make tires for to replace those or lift them, there was quite a few uh, of those knobby tires. Um, we didn't really stop to ask because it's not something you really see on Porsches, maybe some Cayennes. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we didn't see the normal uh, manufacturers. Uh, yeah, yeah, on display. We also walked by a booth uh, called Wave Track. Yes. What did you see there? Uh, they made uh, limitless, and um, he. Uh, we got into the topic. You know, we said we're at the Porsche Club and asked what the latest and greatest was, and they told us about their um, differentials for cars with PDK. So where PDK may have um, essentially an electronic differential, mm -hmm. where it's using the braking to uh, to give you the same effect as the differential. This is going to give you a, a real uh, mechanical differential, and uh, it can really transform your PDK. It was a um, it is was that, interesting how they were targeting uh, PDK cars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's what people are running out on the track. Yeah, they're looking for extra performance. So uh, let's. What else we saw? We ran into the folks at Liquid Molly, and we ran into Lake Speed with Total Seal. A lot of you uh, know Lake from uh, previous videos. Um, we can talk about the oil stuff, and then maybe talk about this can right here. Uh, that's uh, Robert threw on the screen there. And so Liquid Molly was showing us the uh, uh, the new oil that's gotten certified by Porsche, uh, the um, twenty weight. This, no, it's actually the 2050 is uh, uh, for the older air-cooled cars um, that uh, is like one of their best sellers. And I'm sure qu quite a few of you are running that. Uh, but they have the um, the other uh, uh, 20 weight oil that uh, just got approved by Porsche. And of course, they have, uh, when Boo was holding the uh, direct injection, uh, fuel injection cleaner, which when we uh, met Lake, Lake Speed at uh, at one of the tables, uh, he was talking about uh, how much uh, gas can um, you know corrupt the, uh, an engine, and, uh, and and he talked about top tier. And we did a, a tech tips on that a few a uh, few months ago about top tier. That look for look for the top tier sticker at gas stations or check online to see if the gas station you usually go to is the top tier because they have more detergents. And uh, what can happen, and I think Vu showing some photos, is how clogged up it can not only clog up the fuel injectors, but really the uh, the, the valve heads as well. Um, so if you're going to be, you know, I asked them, I said, well, you know, my cars, they get uh, not parked completely, but I don't drive them as much during the wintertime. Can we put something in there to uh, help uh, stabilize the, uh, the gas with ethanol? And he said... Uh, Look for anything with PEA, which uh, he said that's a, that's the the uh, ingredient you're looking for, and that's the active ingredient that uh, any good fuel injection cleaner will have. And right on the very first line of the Liquid Molly direct injection cleaner, this combination of proven PEA and uh, Lake wasn't even. I mean, we're talking separately from our visit with Luke and Molly. He just mentioned, you know, get anything that has PEA, and of course, we happen to have this one. And first line PEA. So it's yeah. Important. We looked online really quick on our phones, and uh, you can get stuff at Walmart, uh, fuel injection cleaner that has PEA. But he said, as long as it has PEA, it's doing this job of uh, of cleaning with these direct injection cars. So it's um, yeah, something that uh, really stuck in our head is. Probably something we're going to be doing with our cars to uh, 
keep them maintained so those fuel injectors don't get clogged up. Right, and it's and it's not going to if you're if you're if it's all clogged up currently, it may help it, but it's not going to completely clear it unless you no. take it. Take it's more of a more, maintenance. It's item. more of a maintenance, yeah. and it slows down, you know, the the process of it getting clogged. Exactly. So, um, so that was a cool tip to learn. We also saw some amazing displays of new products on interiors, and the one that caught our eye uh, was Recaro. Recaro came and brought some cool seats. There, this is their um, carbon fiber. Uh, seat and um, I don't think that one's even available for sale yet. It was, yeah, it's getting, out, yes, yeah. it was getting a lot of eyeballs and people were asking about it, but they said it wasn't available yet. But it had a whole line of uh, a tire, oh, excuse me, of uh, seats. And you can see the inserts now. Uh, Ten years ago, every cars were pretty much all black, and now they're becoming uh, much more uh, up to date with the different types of inserts that people are looking for on their uh, cars and different weights. Right? They have. You know, super lightweight carbon fiber. They have like the standard, I guess, fiberglass or whatever material that might be. And then they had the full functioning, like reclining, a, reclining as uh, they, I, I believe Recaro uh, is the OEM provider for a lot of manufacturers as well. So they had those seats uh, to show folks. And I just love that that pattern. That's just a nice, cool retro pattern. Yeah, they're very comfortable seats, and uh, and they have different sizes. You can. We sat in what? We sat in a large, I think. <laughs> and yeah, he, nicely. <laughs> she made a point of letting us know we were sitting in a large. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't a small because I may have gotten stuck. <laughs> All right, what else did we see? We stopped by our friends at Griot's Garage. And uh, I think the key word there, uh, aside from this product, if you, if Robert, you can show the next one. There you go. The key word in a lot of the products now is ceramic. ceramic. Ceramic, ceramic, ceramic. Why ceramic? I thought they were going to tell me gross hair back <laughs> because everything had ceramic in it. Not just from Griot's, but uh, every uh, every car care uh, manufacturer had, you know, the key word is ceramic. And when I asked about that, you know, they say it's because the uh, material is essentially giving you uh, more protection and it's making it the, the surface more slick. Exactly. So, yeah. um yeah, it's glass ceramic, um, paint with ceramic. They believe it or not, they still make good old fashioned carnauba wax without ceramic. Um, yeah, and they, what they mentioned was it's how you're going to use the car. You know, the good old carnauba wax has like this glossiness and just it's beautiful when applied properly. And if it's a if it's a car that you you know only it only goes out on dry days and you go, take it to shows, good old carnauba wax done properly, like the shine on that can't be beat but you know the ceramic stuff is for cars that are being used might be see uh, inclement weather um, see a lot of brake dust it's just it it helps it has the brightness and the glossiness that you're looking for maybe not as as good as true carnauba wax but it's so much easier to maintain and if there are contaminants that are going to fall onto the paint of your car um, it's also going to be easier to clean off, it's going to be more more protection for your clear uh, as a barrier, a sacrificial layer per se. Um, yeah, and and in addition to, you know, the 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 waxes and the ceramic coatings, what I saw was there was a lot of ceramic coating companies that were coming out with products that are for I wouldn't say a normal consumer i would say and not a not a standard consumer and not for the pro because the pros have their stuff but they can, they're kind of developing ceramics for the people in between like you're a hobbyist you do know how to buff a car you do know how to do some sort of a paint paint correction that they're coming out with stuff that is a bit more forgiving when you're applying the ceramic and less chance of you messing up that panel with letting it haze or streak. And that was kind of cool because I'm obviously not a professional detailer and I've always been pretty um, intimidated by trying the, the high pro level ceramics. But now that they're coming out with like this middle level, I think that's pretty cool. I think the middle level is the safe level yeah. because you have the lower level. And, and I've done this with my, my daily driver. You know, I, I've seen the videos on YouTube and I said, I'm going to buy XYZ brand. Um, and the key is uh, they don't mention really, in, in fine print, they mentioned essentially paint correction. 
uh, but in the bigger print, it's simply spray it on and uh, wipe it off while it's wet, and you're going to have a, a ceramic coat of car. And I think we all know that's not exactly how easy it is. Uh, really, the uh, the key is that paint correction part. Yeah. Um, without the paint correction, you're just well, you're basically waxing or, or, or putting carbon ceramic over uh, dirt. You're you're preserving your imperfect finish is what yeah. you're going to do. So you definitely want to prep the surface so that it's as nice as can be before you apply the ceramic. Now, we have a question here from Forever Images LLC. Can you use ceramic if the car has a paint tra treatment uh, like clear bra? And absolutely. A yep. lot of people do that. Again, the condition of your clear bra is going to be important. Um, in fact, a lot of, I, mean, I know Porsche owners, because I get this question a lot as technical director, and they ask, can I put a uh, ceramic coating on my uh, paint protection film? Mm -hmm. and of course, the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, it's recommended. And that's probably why, going back to what we were discussing earlier, why the paint protection film manufacturers realize, wow, this is a great re revenue opportunity for us by infusing the uh, the ceramic coating into the film. It's kind of like when they put the peanut butter and the jelly together in one jar. Yeah, but I don't think that combination will, will actually worked out because I like different types of jellies. So anyways, we off <laughs> gone off a tangent there. Uh, one little tip that I found, and those of you that uh, install paint protection film already know this, but I didn't realize, yes, you do want to pr uh, prep your paint as well as possible before you either ceramic coat or put paint protection film on it. But there are paint protection films out there that if, you, let's say you have a black car that has a slight bit of swirl in it, not like heavy scratches, but slight bit of swirl, we saw some folks demonstrate and put um, the PPF, paint protection film, right over that lightly swirled uh, gloss finish and the paint protection film and the, I guess the adhesive filled it all in and it looked perfect. So that's pretty cool. Like you didn't have to go and spend a lot of time and or money to get that surface perfect, perfect. And you can put a paint protection film on it and it looks amazing. So that was kind of cool. And for those who uh, don't know, if you've gotten any uh, paint work done to your car, um, give it anywhere from 30 to maybe 90 days to let it cure. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want to put the film that adhesive on fresh paint because when it comes time to remove it, there's a good chance the paint will come along with it. So you definitely have to let it cure. And they were very uh, adamant about that today too when we were uh, talking to them about it. Yeah, uh, we have, a, actually let's let's go to our winners. I believe we have the winners. Let's see, the 10 sign goes to, looks like Bikey Moto out of uh, McAllen, Texas. The um, SEMA hat goes to Stuart Free. Congratulations, Max. You get a you get a West Coast Customs t-shirt. So for Max, just let us know if you need a large or an extra large, I think we got. Yep. So your choice there, and we'll send all of these three items directly to you. There was a question from Lance Johnson. Are there any exterior care products to remove the black scuffs from uh, track day tire clag. Uh, I actually, I, I did see on the shelf at the Griot's garage display, they have like a track spray cleaner. Um, the other one that I use, it's in a blue can. Oh, I use it all the time. Yeah, there's an article on the PCA uh, oh. website. Uh, Shoot, someone, actually, we, we someone in the, the live uh, chat tell Lance, I use it all the time. It's, uh, it's a blue. Lance, Drop me, or any of you, just drop me uh, uh, an email. I'll I'll find you. There's there's another product out there that I use that. Or if you look at the uh, past Tech Tactic lives, um, yeah. we did it. We just this year we did a Tech Tactics live with a professional detailer. Yes. And he had a lot of uh, Tim had a lot of McNair had a lot of recommendations just for that track cars and how to get the uh, get them off like that. Yep. And in that in that video, you'll see the blue can. I can't believe I, it'll yeah, come I'm to me. At, it'll come too. to me at at, at the end of the show. Uh, let's see. So we also saw this cool a uh, canister at Griot's garage. I don't know, Robert. Can you bring it? It's the black can. So this black can, what you do is you fill it up. Like right now, if you were to buy um, the Griot's garage uh, quick detailer, you you kind of pump spray it. But this this canister, you actually pour whatever liquid that you want to use. You attach it to your air compressor. It pumps up to, I think, 90-some 90 90, 90 PSI. It has a blow-off valve, so you can't 
overpressurize it, but then now your your solution can come out as a spray, almost did, like an aerosol. Did he say you could put brake fluid in that? He did. Yeah, but, it's, that's what stuck in my head. But brake fluid already typically comes pressurized. But I guess you. No, 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 not in the pump. When you got to pump it, when you're doing it by yourself, it's going to replace. You know, we got that pump. You pump it oh, up to a certain pressure. Cause that's oh, not 90 pounds. Though. I don't. You, we better check on that one. I'm yeah. not so sure. I think he was talking about putting brake fluid cleaner in there to rinse it out, maybe? I don't know. Uh -huh. um, anyways, uh, check it out on Griot's Garage website. It's a pump canister. Uh, Robert, I don't know if you can bring it back up quickly for them to see, but if not, it's in, it's in all their latest catalogs that you'll probably have in, in your mailbox already. All right, let's see. We also stopped by another one of our sponsors, Anti-Gravity, and uh, they make the lightweight lithium batteries. What'd you see there? Actually, what I uh, <laughs> I was talking to a, a PCA member who had never heard of this, and I said, you know, I said this is. I think everybody should have one of these. This is a little portable lithium, uh, um, basically hot shot. So instead of carrying that big, bulky, heavy uh, lead acid uh, booster, um, you just carry this thing that's very lightweight, and uh, it's very easy to use, and it also serves as a flashlight. It's all LED. Um, I have one. And now I swear by it. It is. Uh, it takes up so little space, lasts so much longer than my old style lit acid uh, booster. Um, the flashlight alone was great. We were grilling on the deck, and we uh, had it out there for an hour on. And it, the battery hardly showed any uh, usage at all. But uh, it gives you, I think, at least. I did ten uh, hot shots at parade with this thing, and I never had to recharge it. Really? Yeah. It was. Uh, uh, I don't think you can bring it on an airplane yeah, because uh, it's a pretty big, pretty big. battery. Oh, well, Robert yeah. found the photo. Yeah. So that's the, um, what, that's it. what do they call it? Aero can, Aero can sprayer. So that's, that's a kind of cool canister. Again, check that out. So back to anti-gravities. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I, if you don't know what it is, uh, look into it. Um, it's, it's takes up so little space and, and so they even make, um, uh, smaller ones, more compact. Oh. You know, they give you the spec according to what uh, what they do it by cylinders. You have an eight-cylinder engine, six-cylinder yeah. engine. You know how much amps you're going to need to uh, jumpstart your car. And, but, and in our past YouTube video talking about batteries, we talk about those as well and making sure that there's. I mean, if you go on say Amazon and such, you'll see all sorts of similar type of battery jumpers, but they're not all created equal in terms of uh, polarity protection, um, just the type of battery that it is, all the different attachments. So check that, check out that video, uh, past PCA YouTube video as well, and you can learn a lot. But that's that anti-gravity one is a, certainly a quality. Yeah, nothing particularly new, but uh, yeah. still people have never, uh, never seen it and are so used to the older style. Uh, you don't have to carry that booster. big old booster box anymore. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. All right, so let's see. We walked over to the electronics hall and uh, ran into the folks over at Escort. And, um, you know, this is, uh, this is something that Manny could have used a few weeks ago. Um, and that is, these are the new dash cams. And why in the world, like, I, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why a dash cam? Like, I, you know, I'm a pretty good driver. Do I really need to capture everything? And there's nothing to steal in my car. Well, these new dash cams, if you have a escort radar detector already, they kind of just simply mount together with the escort radar detectors and they power off. Then it's, it's you probably can install that in your car in under a minute. And uh, then it records on a little micro SD. And Manny, why don't you tell them if you had had that, how it may have made your life a little bit easier a few weeks ago. Yeah, I... I... I knew what my mission was at SEMA was to learn more and find uh, a, um, a dash cam because I was sitting at a stop sign in my Boxster and a uh, driver was uh, making a left-hand turn, cut it short and ran into the front of the Boxster and uh, they admitted guilt. They gave me insurance information, never took mine because it was their fault. Uh, two days later, I called the insurance company and suddenly the whole story's changed. And um, I got stuck with the paying the bill, or my insurance company got stuck with paying the bill um, because there was no 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 witnesses. 
And, uh, you know, we didn't call the police because it was a very small, uh, small uh, dent. There wasn't anything huge, but uh, a dash cam would have recorded that. And if you go to, uh, you know, on Reddit, there's a whole section just of dash cam videos where people, um, you know, have proven to the, uh, to the police or the insurance company that it wasn't their fault. It was somebody else's. So now, and dash cams have been around for a while, so yeah. it's nothing new. Uh, but the big thing I saw in almost all the manufacturers is uh, it's three cameras now. Uh, and, and if you have like a, a Panamera or a, a Tesla, uh, this is coming standard, but they have the 360 camera where you can see from the inside and almost all around oh, the interior? rear. Yeah. Oh, there's, really? There's okay. three cameras they mount. It's all wireless. At least the ones we saw were wireless. And of course, they're front facing. Um, and do your research, and there's a lot of information out there. But there's ones where uh, if your car is parked in a parking lot, you know, at the grocery store, and somebody backs into it, it will start recording automatically, and so it'll capture whoever, uh, whoever, whoever backed into your car. And you've probably seen the videos of people scratching Teslas, and the Teslas recorded everything because mm -hmm. Tesla has a lot of cameras yeah. there as well. Uh, price point uh, for. Uh, decent ones about three hundred dollars so yeah and that's i think that's what, much I, what i was gonna say is all these cameras now yeah it's they've been around for a while but they were kind of pricing i never thought eh, i don't want to spend a couple of you know hundred dollars for each camera i'll wait and now you're finding a couple hundred dollars you can get a front rear front and rear camera and now for 300 400 you get an interior monitor as well and it uploads uh if uh, you pull your car to a Wi-Fi that it knows it could also upload it to you. Yeah, and it just basically records over itself on the SD card. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it'll go maybe two weeks, depending on how much you drive and how much it's on. Uh, but you don't have to like reset it or delete anything. It uh, it's fairly smart, and it's about the size of a GoPro. The ones they yeah, have they're getting smaller at the show. Yep. So you know it's easily removable, like you said. Move to another car, take in your pocket. Uh, or as I would like to do, just leave it there. If somebody vandalizes a car or, or hits it, there's video uh, proof of what happened. So if I can get Robert, if you can run through the SEMA cars uh, deck, and let's just talk about the cars that we saw, more specifically the Porsches that we saw. Uh, one, there weren't as many cars, right? Because there's just you know less boosts and such, and not a crazy boost, but. The cars, the cars typically at SEMA are wild, yes, but I feel as though the trend of a lot of these cars, and you look at this one, yes, it's wild, it's got a wide body kit, it's got a big wing on it, but it's it's not that wild. I mean, like, I don't think it's like over the top, like bling, blingy, crazy. Um, I, you know, the fender flares are, you know, it, it's, they're nicely done. I don't think the squirrels stand a chance in this car. <laughs> it, that's because it's aired down. Yes. Once you, once yeah. you hit the, the ignition and hit the lift system, it'll bring it on up. But, um, and it's not just this car, just a lot of the cars at all the different booths, I would say we're just more. Oh, and we're going to talk about this one here in a second. This is a 77 RSR inspired uh, car that West Coast Customs built. We'll go back to that. But again, look at that. This is West Coast Customs like centerpiece of their 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 area. And it's a pretty mild looking car. But we'll, this one here, this was in front of uh, the tire hall. This is a sort of a DP 935, 935, 935 tribute. Really well done, except for the stripes, maybe. That car's not over the top. I mean, it's low. Again, it's aired down, but it's not over the top in, in, in the normal SEMA sense. You look at the car next to it, like that car almost looks stock. And you used to never see stock looking vehicles at SEMA. So is that uh, a, a change in people's. Maybe? I think. Uh... So I, I hadn't come in 10 years. So it was, I went to the first time we went in 2011 and then again this year. And um, from what, and I saw uh, after the first day, I was looking at social media and, and somebody was posting photos of all the empty spots <laughs> in, in the convention center where it had usually been filled. And uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers decided to stay home or maybe not invest in some wild builds. Yeah, but well, I think you'll see it come back uh, next year because as well, you know, we had dinner with some uh, Germans and they were like just so happy. They were they got out with they were able to get out, but it was like almost like a two days or three days notice they had. Mm -hmm. They were allowed to leave uh, Germany to come to the U.S. 
And I'm sure that was all around, and some people that can't do that in just three days. So I think uh, it's good we were back, but I think you're going to see a much bigger SEMA next year. Oh, you definitely will. Yeah. I think, pe again, people are happy that we're here. The locals are happy. The the vendors that were able to make it, the, the spectators that are here, they're absolutely loving uh, the fact that SEMA happened. And next year, it'll probably bonk be bonkers again, yeah. and sold out hotels uh, as the norm. Uh, this That was a... Uh, if you go back, Robert, that was a um, not a real speedster, obviously, but that one's pretty wild. Uh, that one is more typical SEMA, but even like from this angle, it doesn't look that crazy. And even from that angle, it doesn't look that crazy. It has a nice built motor there. Uh, the interior is a bit over the top, but more restrained than past SEMAs. At least it doesn't have Lambo doors and neon kits underneath of it, right? And, that, and we've seen that in the, in the past couple of years. So we did have a question. I forget who it was from. Let me just pull it up here. And they were asking uh, whether or not we've seen, da, 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 let's see if we had seen some electric cars. I apologize. The, the live chat is great. You guys are asking a lot of questions. Um, and I can't find who asked that. But did you know what do EVs or how big of EVs roll um, at SEMA? Well, just to start with, the whole Tesla loop. 70 some Teslas going underground of the, the convention center, uh, taking people from one end to the middle to the other end. And uh, it's pretty cool, super quiet, get there, uh, saves you some walking. As far as uh, EVs inside, we have a car here, the electric GT. I didn't get to see it, Manny did. Robert, if you can bring that up and Manny, you can share with folks what this electric GT, that's the red one, Robert. Yeah, so it looked like a, a 74 RSR, um, you know, the, the iconic uh, uh, RSR look, um, but it uh, was all electric. There it is. There it is. Yeah. And uh, I'm hoping that we see this at Unstock because they're, uh, you know, I spoke to the uh, to the people behind it and they're, they're headquartered right in Huntington Beach. Perfect. Where we're having the event. So I told them, I said, this show is right up your, uh, your alley because it's for modified Porsches. And, uh, you know, he asked me about the purists, and I said, well, the purists aren't involved with this. And this is a uh, pretty cool build. And they're selling it as a system. You can put in other cars all uh, basically plug and play. It's, so does uh, it use, like, they, do they build it where it uses factory mounts and you don't cut up? It, 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 it sure looked like it was pretty, it was packed at his uh, this place. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to talk about it. There was a lot of people interested in it. Um, but it didn't look like there was a lot of fabrication. It looked like they worked around the existing uh, mm -hmm. space. I think it was 164-mile range, uh, 450 horsepower. So um, not, not, not a Tesla, but, yeah. uh, you know, not a homemade uh, yeah. a car either. It was, so where uh, were the batteries? Up front? Uh, I believe they're on the, uh, part in the back in that box. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, I uh, see the controller. It looks like the controller yeah. up there in the middle. Um, the, I'm guessing the motor's underneath of it. Yeah, they had the, the motor and the battery on display. Did you happen to catch, like, what the weight of the car is now versus when it was? No, they didn't have the specs on that. Mm. But it was, uh, yeah, it was gathering a lot of attention. Yeah, because, it's a beautiful car. Yeah, more horsepower than I think Porsche had on the original yeah. RSR. And to instant torque. Instant torque and a lot less maintenance. Yeah, I know some of you that are watching says, well, it doesn't have the growl of a flat six. Absolutely. But if they've designed that correctly and you're wanting that torque, you're wanting that, uh, you know, new new powertrain, so to speak, you can do that to your car. And then hopefully the way they've designed it is at some point you want to put your car back to stock, either to sell it or you want to hear the rumble of your, your six cylinder, you can take it all apart and put it back to stock. But there was a lot of uh, a lot of EV uh, related uh, yeah. manufacturers uh, selling replacement motors or motors for people who uh, want to convert to electricity. There were a lot of converted cars, mm -hmm. electric cars, and cars that looked, you know, typical hot rod, SEMA, beautiful cars, electric powertrain. You're starting to see people accept it uh, a, a bit more, and uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool. I don't know if it's yeah. I don't know if it's really for me. I, I think electric cars for me personally. Is great as a daily driver, but I think for those, for me, and for those that really love the engagement of a ice 
power plant, like that's me. I like the clutch. I like the smell. I like all of that. But I'm sure the people that used to ride horses and carriages said the same. <laughs> yeah, horses didn't go anywhere. They're still around. Yeah. Um, and I don't think uh, internal combustion is going to disappear in five years. It'll still be around as well. Okay. Um, just by the enthusiasm people have for it. But uh, electric cars can't be ignored. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really um, the new technology. And we're in, a, we're in a really fascinating time right now as we experience this changeover. Absolutely. So those of you that are on the live chat tonight, if you have questions, for Tony and Ramon, I'm gonna bring them back on in a second, but before we bring them back on, we're gonna talk about the car that impressed us the most. And I've hinted uh, to this earlier in the show, and it's the show um, Ryan's group over at West Coast Custom built this 77 RSR sort of tribute car. And we were kind of taken aback when we walked up to their area because typically you see some really outrageous builds a Bentley, you know, two-tone, this, that, and We're the still other. scarred from Pit My Ride. <laughs> and they would put goldfish tanks in the back of the car. Exactly. So, and we we met, uh, I, I think, who was the lead? or Lorenzo. At least Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Strong, yeah. yeah and he Lo was a true enthusiast Absolutely. of Porsche. He was, uh, he was happy to speak with us. And, uh, yeah, he, he led the build and uh, made it. And you can tell it was yeah. led by a Porsche enthusiast. Yep. In fact, when they tore down the car... If you look in the quarter glass there, Robert, and you get to the next slide, they actually he actually kept the uh, old school PCA sticker. decal yeah. in the in the window because he wanted to reuse that, which I thought that that said a lot. Those are the kind of details. You look at this interior here, again, they could have gone so many different ways with that interior, but I think they um, classy, not the 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 pattern that they've chosen is retro, not too over the top, how they did the stitching around the floor mats, the uh, sports seats, the they, they used a Momo Prototipo. What is more classic than a Momo Prototipo, right? Again, they could have used any kind of flashy wheel at their disposal, uh, but they kept it the same. My favorite part was uh, I walked around the car like three times, I saw nothing that said West Coast no. Customs, which usually you always see it all over the car and um you know the car was on a race platform and we were looking down yeah. on it and uh somebody we were, who was in our group said uh what's what's that squiggly stuff on the grill all oh, right and he had told us well come up up on the stage you can get a better look at it and very subtle tastefully done. tastefully very tastefully they put the west coast um logo on the grill uh, but you did, you weren't attracted to it the first time you saw the car. Right. And the only reason we saw it, because it's actually uh, the engine lid had its traditional grill across the top. And they had this plexiglass with the West Coast Customs logo underneath of it. So if you peeked between the grills, you saw it. But otherwise, you know, again, it was really tastefully done. You see the RSR uh, embossing that they did in the grill. You see, uh, you know, it's it's straight up white with Carrera blue stripes, you know, Fuchs wheels. You can tell they're a little bit larger. I think they're braid wheels, um, PCA supporters, and you've seen braid at, at our events. Um, coilover, they, they did a coilover suspension on it, big red brakes. They correctly um, removed the sunroof. Yes. And filled yes. it in. They filled it in. Yeah. They filled it in, did a great job. The headliner is suede. So they took like some modern cues and, and added to the car, the the, the center console is, is custom, but yet it looks... But the car still looked iconic. It did, I it mean, did. That's what attracted our attention from far away because we weren't planning to stop by there, but it was, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we were all tired heading back to the car and we uh, said, let's go take a closer look at this car. And the more you look at, again, from 50 feet away, you're like, okay, this car is special, um, cool build, but the more you look into it, you look at the power plant and you see the stacks, you see the Motronic, like you dig into, you open the doors and you see the pattern of the vinyl that they choose is like a Porsche pattern. You see the vinyl that uh, the bottom part is sort of like that, that blue burl wood kind of retro vinyl. Again, very classy. The tops of the doors, they could have just reused a 77 door top, but they liked how, I think it was a door top from a 964 yep. and wrapped it in leather. So all these little details came out 
when you took a closer look at the car. And to me, again, no, n- nothing negative about past West Coast custom builds, but this was truly a classy and impressive. And it build. sounds like they want to get into more Porsche I, builds, which I is exciting. So. so we, hopefully, uh, we can feature uh, future builds that they do. So well done to the folks at West Coast Customs, Ryan. If you're watching, and to the rest of the crew, congratulations on that build, and hopefully, we'll see that car at Unstock in Huntington Beach. We'll talk about that event. That event's November 14th. Manny, I'm gonna ask you to step off and bring Tony and Ramon. We've got uh, a few questions for them and uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. So of course, when you have folks that really work on cars, um, you're gonna get technical questions. So here's a question. A gentleman who has a 1983 928S, what's a good replacement for the old silver spark plugs that are no longer available? Who said they're not long, no longer available? They're, <laughs> yeah, you, you can get they're them. They're there. Yeah. You just go to the wrong store. You go to the wrong shop. Give, give, give <laughs> Call them. Give Call them. Yeah, give us Call the call. Them. So they're, so we'll they're still available. We'll get your source. Tony brings it up. Yep. They try to use newer products on all the cars. Yeah, like the Petronics, yeah. and and they're available. They're available. Okay, they're so out there, yes. so the question was asked by Jim. Jim, I'm sure you guys don't mind getting a few no, calls. No, uh, or give, give me his information. I will okay. email or yeah. call him with the part number and where he can. Uh, where's he at? Uh, uh, he's out of here. he's out of Illinois. We'll get to Jim. Okay, we don't cool. want him not to have the right spark plugs. So. Okay, um, talking about the uh direct injection again go someone mm-hmm. we, we talked about this stuff right what are you seeing uh where you're working on a cayenne right now you're you yep. mentioned walnut blasting or something yep. like that yeah, yeah you don't eat them we'll clean them you, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. well you eat the walnuts and then you put the shells in there for cleaning we have a lot of rodents to get in cars so oh. it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, any, a cir- it's a circle of life any of the newer cars whether it's a cayenne macan panamera um that's why you know, Tony's got two hundred ninety thousand on his first generation Cayenne. Yeah, we never yeah. had to do it. It's uh, yeah. it's a buildup we have. Well, it's right. Not, it's yeah, a the, it's, it's the direct in, injection that it, that creates the problem because it's not cleaning the carbon off the back of the valves mm. because the the injection is down below the valve. Mm-hmm. So it it cokes up. It gets hard. We actually take the intake off and we scrape out, we, you have to chip yeah, out a lot of really, that. really yeah. hard okay. stuff. And then we, we blast it with uh, walnut shells uh, while we're vacuuming at the same time with, with the cylinder closed, with the valve closed. Now you, you had mentioned if someone doesn't maintain that and lets it get built up too much, what can happen? Well, you can wipe out your catalytics because oh. it's, it's dumping fuel, it's not burning, right? Yeah. But we had uh, one gentleman, it got so sticky that he bent a valve. Mm-hmm. Ooh, then it gets really expensive. Yeah. And depending on the driver, we've seen it anywhere from as early as forty-five to fifty thousand, to the average is around eighty or ninety. And it's uh, it's hard to explain to the customer the cost. Yeah. Because it is very labor, labor intensive. Intensive, yeah. Intensive, and they don't understand. Like, well, I didn't do anything wrong. No, that's just you want more power. Yeah. The government wants cleaner air. And you want better mileage. Well, and, and we've got you guys, and we've got lousy gas, and we have lousy gas. I mean, you might so, pour so corn to the, oil to the there, driver of that Cayenne over there, did he or she like? Were there symptoms, or was there a check engine light, or how did they know? Uh, or how did you know that something was wrong? Check engine light is yeah. normally what we'll get. Okay. Um, if we're in there for other reasons, like sometimes a car will come in and it has a coolant leak underneath uh, that intake, mm. or because uh, there's a coolant transfer pipe. Or if there's a vacuum leak and we have to take that off, we'll tell them we're going to look and we'll send you pictures. It's up to you why we're While already you're in there. there. Yeah. Spend the extra labor and get it done. Right. So it's, like the, it's like the IMS bearing. If right. we're, we're going to do a clutch or any reason you pull the transmission out of most of the water cooled cars, um, that's the time to just change the IMS bearing, even if there's no symptoms right. at all. You're already in there. You're there. You're already yeah. there. And that's so, why when people buy a car and they come to us, we say get service records because there's no way for us to know because they always come two months later. Gee, if I knew this was going to happen, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't have bought it. Well, 
I don't. I hate. I don't a have a proper pre-purchase <laughs> inspection. We <laughs> yes. say Absolutely. it all the time. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we say it all the time. Service yeah. records, very. And service records. Yeah. And again, you recommend doing something along this lines that That's has great stuff. Yeah. That has a PEA, and uh, again, it's not going to stop it from happening. Right. It'll, but it, it'll slow, slow it down. down. Yeah. Slow it'll it down. really help. That's okay. a new product. And, and do, do you recommend people do this like once a year, or based on mileage, or how how often do you run this? We put it in whenever we do an oil change, yeah. which is like every 5,000, but I encourage So you them. would do an oil change, and this actually goes into the gas tank? Yes. Right. Okay, got it. And if they want to buy one to put in in another couple months, we'll sell it to them because yeah. it's – you can get it online, but yeah. it's it's less expensive here, and it's, it's right there. Well, Tony Ramon, I told you the show would go by quick. It's already <laughs> at the top yep. of the hour. Thank you for having us, and I hope you guys enjoyed – Joining us here in Las Vegas, here at the 900 Series Motorsports, catch them. Oh, they asked, where can they watch the upcoming uh, shows? This year, primarily, it's on MAV TV. MAV TV, okay. And is it uh, first season's already up? For, first season is archived out there on on Tubi and Fubo and Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime. So okay. all, all yeah. that's all yeah. that's still archived out okay. there. Okay. So all well, the new season is primarily on MAV TV. It's going to be out on, on a few other networks. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. Thanks for having us. Appreciate Everyone, it. Everyone stay safe. Uh, we have upcoming Unstock, as I mentioned, in Huntington Beach. It's a Porsche show focused on modified Porsches. A lot of the cars that we saw at SEMA, we've invited. They will be. Uh, we're hoping that West Coast Customs car will be at Unstock November 14th. As far as display um, ability, that is sold out. But attending, if you just want to roll up and attend and see the show, it's open to everyone. No need to register. Just roll up and have a good time with us. And then also want to Maybe share. Go. You yeah. should. <laughs> you should. You're only a couple hours away. Uh, also want to let you know if you. Uh, are interested in winning a 2022 992 or 911 Carrera Coupe, the PCA member only raffle is open. 50 bucks buys you a ticket, and I've seen a lot of members turn that $50 ticket into mm -hmm. a 911. And I'd love to show up at your house and uh, surprise you with that new car. So anyways, everyone be safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.